Well, good morning. Well, by the time you get this, it may not be morning, so. Uh, just a force of habit saying good morning when it's morning time. Ah, uh, let that truck build up a little bit of air. Got the heater running in the shop. I could get, if I pulled that four wheeler out of here, I could probably get pretty much the whole truck in here and shut the door, but I can't get through that door all the way with his trailer bunked up the way he is because the stakes are too high, it'll hit. So I'm only gonna be able to get it nosed in. I'm gonna get it in probably just about where the stakes hit it, back in here somewhere. And, uh, and then uh, we'll just have to leave the heater running and leave the door open. But anyways, uh, I gotta pull the steering gear box off this and this power steering pump. This has a piece of shit pack R in it. Uh, Kevin knows I ain't too fond of pack R's. But uh, Kevin's the guy that owns the truck. <clears throat> That's the guy that we did that pulled the front drive axle out of and welded the housing on it and everything. He's been running for I don't know how long ago was that. No problems with that. No problems with the transmission. We went through the auxiliary section on the transmission and rebuilt it too. Uh, the high-low synchro was uh, the splitter gear. The splitter gear was fine. Let's see. Wait a second. No, the splitter gear. The splitter gear, which is the one that the sliding on the synchro comes to the forward side of it for high range, and then the, the low reduction gear. So I changed the low reduction gear because the clutch collar teeth were screwed up on it and also the clutch collar teeth on the splitter gear were screwed up. And then uh, put a new high low synchro, of course, the entire assembly on it, all new bearings, all that shit. Uh, rebuilt the air cylinders on it for the splitter and the range cylinder. And she splits gears now and shifts from high to low. I just heard the fan shut off, so. Uh, well, let's uh, open the door up, pull the truck inside. Let me go pull this thing in. Reach is gonna hit my door there.
this thing's doing to Kevin here, it's just shoving all the fluid right through the reservoir. And he was telling me about it. He said, as soon as you start, it just shoves it right out. The, he says, it's leaking at the pump. And it's, I said, man, if it's going clear back into the reservoir, I mean, the only thing I can think of is it's gotta be coming back through here, through the return and pushing it out. So I said, and he said it had a bunch of silvery metal looking like stuff in it. So I said, well, if it's got a bunch of that in there, you better change both. And then we'll try to blow the lines out because it's probably contaminated. Because I guarantee if we just put a pump on it and then, or vice versa, if we just put a steering gear box in, then the shit that's floating around will get back into the pump and take it out. So as you can see, I got this little nice little headlamp so a guy named Danny Bays sent me this and sent me icon screwdrivers a couple o-ring sets some strikers there's a pocket knife in here too and there's another guy that sent me uh, I'm trying to remember what I did with it uh, I'm trying to remember all the stuff he sent me because I'm sorry man I've got the paper or the letter he sent in the house and I'm <coughs> forgetting his name I get so much stuff sent to me guys that I I can't keep up with it I'm very sorry but for everybody who's done something for me like that I I mean these are brake spring pliers these are pretty awesome man um, I've already used them a couple times uh, I've always did it with screwdriver <laughs> but no uh, thank you very much for all the all the stuff that they uh, you guys contribute to this channel. I really appreciate it. Well, uh, let's just use this little headlamp. So we got a bucket here and got us a pair of pliers. Pull the suction return off and let it go in the bucket. And I don't care about losing all the oil because we kind of want to lose it all anyway. Yep. A hell of a day ahead of us. We got Dave's truck storing a 559 code. I got an N14 down there. That, my God, what a disaster that thing was. It's an old water truck, and that probably would have been it. Come on. Good grief. pucker you got some of a bitch off there Get the pressure line off here anyways n14 had a plethora of problems it's not licensed it's an old Volvo with an n14 in it uh, it just they just keep it on the the strawberry nursery keeps it on their field roads and they uh, water the roads all summer along with it. Well, needless to say, it doesn't have, <laughs> it has a bunch of guys running it who aren't operators, don't even have CDLs or any of that shit. So they can't drive, they don't take care of nothing anyway. So they couldn't get the pinion seal out of it and the pinion seal once I looked at it, I said, shit, that's an SQHD rear end. I, somebody must have stuck that SQHD. I mean, those SQHD rear end Rockwells, they stopped putting those in trucks in like the late 70s, early 80s. So I, I can't imagine that being in a mid-90s truck, which was really odd. Anyways, they were trying to get the pinion seal out from the outside. Well, on those SQHDs, they don't, they don't come from the outside. They get changed. You get a pluck pop there's like six half inch bolts you pop that cover off and they come out from the back side of that cover so I did that and it was running like shit 
and it had number one injector missing and it, well, it was misfiring on number one cylinder so I swapped number one and two injectors and then did the cutout test again then it was still misfiring on cylinder number two so I thought well we got a bad injector so I ordered an injector Tom got me one at Ken Kenworth and uh, I changed that and got it running smooth but it kept stalling out and I can't even tell you how many codes that thing had it had so many codes in the ECM and it would just stall and die long story short that thing had caught on fire a couple years ago they'd burnt the harness all up in it and they'd scabbed it all back together well whoever did the wiring on it did a really really piss poor job and you'll see when we get down there I've got a I got my soldering kit and all that stuff because we got to fix it all we got to do it right they left bare wire back where they put their butt connectors on they put bare, I mean they left bare spots on on power supply wires bare spots that fucking long on there and they're all touching the frame and arcing out and then the there's a three pin plug on those N14s that has two power supplies and then there's a there's a ground that goes to the ECM and then uh, there's two fuses in line on that well both the fuses were popped I don't even know how it was running I, I still can't believe it ran because because of the ECM had no power to it so explain that to me so uh, anyway both those fuses were popped I replaced those fuses I stripped all their electrical tape all off the harness and saw all the bare wires with the wires touching each other and then spots where they didn't even tape it and bare wire touching the frame rail you're like you got to be shitting me it's just unbelievable so anyways we got to go straighten that mess out maybe I can get Dave's truck in there I got a John Deere 210C skip loader that this starter pinion failed on it and it ate the ring gear. I got to pull the shuttle transmission out of that and that's probably not even going to, I'm probably not even going to get that far today, but. Okay, so we got to get this steering linkage off. Yeah, got to get the pitman arm off there. Good times, good times. Let's try this again. This is the new impact. <laughs> the one that doesn't uh, I'm gonna have to sit there and hold the battery on. Let's go get one of those pry bars that Dennis got me. Yeah, so we need to get our ass down there today and solder and heat shrink and get that stuff all wired correctly. on getting the Pittman arm. So, while it's on the truck, I'm gonna get this loose. Or does the new one come with the Pittman arm already on it? I don't know. I most of them. I don't think they came with the pitman arm on them. I've never seen one. To be honest with you, like this, you do bend this tab up, bend that tab down. Let me get something to bend the tabs, I guess. Well, this wonderful Napa set skips sizes, so you go from a 14 millimeter to a 17 millimeter. 14 is too small, and 17 is too big. I was trying to get going early so I could get this thing apart and get it done and get down there and get going because I'm in Klamath and I got a lot of work to do down there. God dang it, man. I bent the little tabs up and I wanted to, I want to leave it on the truck till I, so I can get it broke loose. That way it holds it for me. Ah, well, I guess I'll go ahead and get the Pittman arm loose here and then 
I'll go ahead and start dealing with the power steering pump up underneath. Son of a bitch, it's always something. Alright, so I've got a pickle fork in there. We'll see how this works. Looks like it ain't going wide enough. Looks like I'm already bottomed out on it. Ah. Yeah, I think I'm already bottomed out on it. Alright, so that ain't working. Hmm. Hmm. Well, shit, what am I going to do here? Tires in the way. So I pull the tire off now. All right, so air hammer uh, pickle fork worked out slicker than shit. It has different adapters, different uh, different forks you can put on there. But no, that goes right in your right in your air hammer. And just oh, they're just. They work just slicker than hell. Okay. So, that's off there now. Oh, what's it doing? It's hitting the, it's hitting the uh, support there, the front support. So, she ain't going to go out any further. Uh, let's see. Can we just try to do as much as we can? <clears throat> Let's take off. Well, we got two bolts here and three bolts up here. Let's get at least a couple, a couple of these bolts off, huh? All right, guys. Ah, get the fittings on. Let's see if we can get this pump back up in here. I left the plugs in the fuel part of it, so I don't get a bunch of shit up in there. Cause it's so easy to get to, you know. Everything's just so easy to work on. Just make everything so convenient for a guy. Too bad, huh? All right. Bolts in it. I was gonna back this. I gotta. Well, I gotta get this truck out of here and shut the door. I ain't gonna be around. So I don't know if I got enough air. I think this thing leaks off air pretty quick. I might have to air it up somehow and drag it back with my service truck or something. I was going to just start it and back it out once I got this pump in, but then I got to thinking about it. I thought, you know, that pump cost him $1,500. I don't want to screw up his pump with no oil in it. So I better, I better hold off on that. Until, uh, until we get our shit together and get a steering gearbox, or you know, or well, I pretty much got to go straight back, don't I? Yeah. 
And these things are so lovely to 1500 bucks for a little power steering pump. What a piece of shit. They got you coming and going, don't they? Okay, so why is it the hole lining up here? Unless I could, well, if I had a manual door, I'd probably just roll the door down halfway. My renter's home, I'd just tell him to watch the place, but I don't know, man. That automatic door, I wouldn't be able to stop it in time. Screw my door up, I better just figure out how I'm going to get it out of here. Because I'm not going to get a steering gear box today, it ain't going to happen. <sighs> just ain't going to happen. He called me the other day about this and, you know, was telling me what it was doing and I told him that it just, we just miscommunicated. And I, I told him, I said, yeah, you need the steer, if you got metal and the, he told me his oil was real silvery looking, you know, and I said, well, if it's got metal in it. You need to change the steering pump and the steering gearbox. Well, he didn't know and he just, he thought, see the transfer pump for the fuel runs off the back of the uh, power steering pump. So he thought that's what I was talking about. And he, he got both both these setups. And of course, he showed up with it this morning. I said, where's the steering gear box at? And we didn't get one. So now he's been down for long enough now waiting for this. He waited three days for this. This will be the fourth day that he's down right now. Uh, so yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Peterbilt can get one over in Medford, but they got one in Portland, but it's going to be tomorrow before they can get it. Grandma was slow, but she was old. <sighs> Gotta love the way they make this shit. You know what? It's just so convenient. <laughs> Not. Now I see what it's doing now. It's going in crooked because. Alright, well, I gotta get like a quarter turn at a time with a wrench on this one. I can't even get a socket or anything on it, I don't think. I might be able to actually, maybe. Alright, well, I got the steering gear box off, got the power steering pump changed, fuel lines, all that shit are back on there. I uh, got the steering gear box off. I uh, got one coming, it's supposed to be here tomorrow. What's that say on there? Shepherd Company Incorporated. Hanover, Pennsylvania. Yeah, there's the part M100 Auto. And that's the part number. Lupe over at Peterbilt started well. M100 PRZ3 RMAN, which probably stands for Reman. So, anyway, uh, is there enough air in this fucking thing to get it? drug out of here or am I gonna have to keep the brakes or what get it out of here I can't even start this up a bit so it's probably like about every other truck you run across especially log trucks they don't hold air for shit because they get to get the shit rattled at them on the roads all day long ah 
shit, I think I got enough air to get her out of here. I gotta hurry though. <sighs> well, this continuation of the first truck we worked on, I actually went to another truck, Dave's truck up there, stolen the dreaded 559 code. Well, the first thing I did was, you know, I went up there and pulled the fitting out of the return, going into the return manifold on that CM 2350. Don't eat that. Don't eat the damn zip tie. Golly, girl. Anyway, I went up there and pulled that off, and then we did the leak. What you can do with the inside is go to the leak test, and it'll ramp the rail pressure up to like 28, 29,000 PSI. And then you just see if your relief valves, you know, you shouldn't have no fuel coming back out the line. Well, we didn't. The relief valve was fine. Uh, kind of just key on engine off to see what rail pressure sensor was reading. I'm pretty certain the rail pressure sensor is fine. Um, it matches the demand when you're sitting there in the driveway, it, you know, it only does it when he pulls the hill. So, so then, you know, the first thought that goes through your mind, most of the time with the 559 code, it's one of two things. Usually it's either going to be the roll, the, the cam followers on the pump can fail. The plungers can fail, uh, or injector is sending way too much fuel back to return. So I said, let's pop the top off the pump. So we pulled the top off the pump. Cam followers look excellent for almost a million and a half miles. And plungers, pulled the plungers out of it. They look fine. I said, I don't see nothing wrong with the pump. I said, uh, I've never seen a fuel control actuator cause that code. I'm not saying that it can't. But I told him, I said, so if you're wanting to go, you can go haul hay and go down south and run it. I said, I feel confident enough that the pump's not going to come apart on you or something to destroy the engine. So he's going to run because I could not find my fitting to put in there and do the return flow check on the injectors, which, you know, I got a feeling we'll be doing that this weekend. So this old piece of shit here, this is a non-licensed type rig here that just basically stays off highway from one of the nurseries and waters the roads. And a uh, multitude of problems so to begin with it ran like shit and misfired number one injector i cut it out with insight and it wasn't doing anything on number one hole and then i swapped number one and two injectors and then i cut number one out again and then it made a difference and then number two didn't so i put a new injector in number two hole and got it to where it runs smooth but this wire here well look they got it's tied in the what the hell they've got a they've got a light bar up here an led light bar that's as soon as you turn the key on the freaking light comes on it's like you gotta be shitting me anyway they have this wired in there and they're they're going directly to their ac clutch with that so basically what i did is i cut that off the fuel shut off solenoid i had all kinds of fuel shut off solenoid codes i had um I'm just trying to give you kind of a rundown of what was going on. Um, basically, I unplugged that, and, and I cut it off there, too, and that got rid of the fuel shutoff solenoid codes. I had a water uh, level shutdown code, and that kept coming up. And to be honest with you, what got rid of that code was back in here... These old N14 Cummins, they've got a, a three-pin plug on them, which is going to be this right here. So I do remember the old guy that retired, he had a bunch of guys working for him over there, and I do remember him calling me one time, and this caught on fire, and it burnt the harness up, and they did a bunch of rewiring. Well... When I got to the truck, and I, because I was getting a bunch of, I was getting a 434 code, which is, a lot of that stuff is like, uh, ECM lost power, basically. So, I peel all the electrical tape off of it. Well, they didn't even get these, they were all touching each other and everything. The center, this one here's the ground, okay, and these two here have a fuse in them, back here. Well, both fuses were popped. So I got new fuses, I put the fuses in there and I got them spread out to where they weren't touching each other anymore. You can see the bare wire where they, I mean, why would you? Anyway, so I got all that. Well, I kept getting shutdown codes and I was getting a intake manifold pressure sensor code back here, which is this sensor on the back of the manifold. 
Well, I didn't have any signal return. Well, signal return, in layman's terms, basically, it's a ground. That's what signal return is. Well, I found out why it didn't have any grounds. I went further up. I had to unbolt the plugs off the back of the ECM, and I get up there, and this wire is your ground. This grounds your ECM. Well, this is what they did. I mean, it wasn't even attached anymore. So that being said, I've got my soldering gun, and I gotta go find my heat shrink, and we're gonna do this right. We're gonna cut all this bullshit off of here and solder the wires together so they don't come undone. Uh, get the bare spots fixed and everything. So anyway, that's what we're gonna be doing here and try to get this thing running right. All right, so we got the, we, we soldered everything back together in numerous places and uh, heat shrunk and tape so we've got like double protection there and then of course they're soldered now so they should not be just coming apart like that that's the bad thing about butt connectors if you don't get a good good solid crimp on them they don't they don't stay hung in there so now we gotta get the ECM plugged in I don't know if the camera situation here is going to work all right so where is that receptacle at somewhere's back in here yeah dave's truck i don't know i'll have to he's going to go for a load i i got a feeling as soon as he pulls my hey, he's going to do it again but what i have a sneaking suspicion is going to happen they never fix themselves they never seem to Never seems to work out like that. Uh, I'm kind of wondering, see, that was that one wire there was the main ground for the ECM. So when you get a ground problem like that, you're going to have all kinds of goofy shit happening. And I wonder if I get my ground back at the, my uh, manifold pressure sensor. I put in, I put this ECM in here shit probably seven eight years ago on this old girl. It was a lot better shape. The truck the truck itself was all the the what they've done to this truck in the last seven or eight years has been unbelievable. How they've destroyed it. These big big farms and stuff, boy. They just they can't keep help. There's never the same people. They stick anybody on any piece of equipment. When I worked for the nurseries, I remember we bought, I shouldn't say we, they did. I didn't buy shit. Uh, they bought like eight brand new tractors at one time. And a couple of them were like the 9,000 series John Deere's, you know, the $300,000, $400,000 tractor. And they just stuck guys, any, they just stuck anybody on them. You know, go jump on that tractor, and it just blew my mind how they could do that and just, I guess, feel okay with it, because that's a high-dollar piece of equipment, you know? Wouldn't you think it might need to have a little bit of training on that, on how to operate it correctly? I don't know. But no, nope, that's not the way it... Can't tell where in the hell I'm at here. I've seen guys over tighten these and screw the ECMs up before. I've seen that numerous times on these N14s. They've got these N14s got three MC ECM plugs on them. On the, a lot of guys say, oh, I cut my teeth on the N14. I cut my teeth on the big cam. That's what I cut my teeth on on Cummins. I've forgotten a lot of stuff that I used to know about the big cams. I just, you don't see very many of them around here anymore. You know, with all the emissions bullshit, there's a lot of these, <clears throat> there's a lot of these farmers 
will still have them out on their ranches and stuff, but they don't really do that much. I mean, they don't run them enough to really have any problems, really, you know. I'm trying to find where that damn... Where is that damn bolt at? Oh, it's up there. That's why I couldn't find it, because I was in the wrong spot. Okay. So I get my ratchet on there. And then we'll... We'll, uh... kind of curious to see if my ground's going to come back. I didn't even look at the schematic. I just knew when I see, I seen all the tape and all the shit back there on that. I knew I better start looking there because I knew I've, I've had N14s before that had problems on the power supply right there before. It's not an uncommon thing. I've seen the wires get melted there before, but usually, they, usually the person fixed them that I'm chasing somebody else that didn't do a very good job. There goes my socket. We're going to have to check engine. Well, I might just check the... I'll turn the key on. I got to go... I took the grounds off. The battery last night when I left and went home, I didn't want... With all that wiring sitting there bare, I didn't want to burn the shop and the truck down last night, so I thought it would be a good idea to not have the batteries hooked up on this thing. What the hell's going on here? Why are you fucking with me here? John Deere on the construction side. See if that ring gear and shit showed up for that 210C skip loader out there. Need to go do that tomorrow. They use that thing quite a bit in the wintertime for... I think they mix their feed with it or something. They use the loader part of it. And I think they mix their feed and load their tub grinder or something with it. But it's... They use her quite a bit, so... Okay, so the three-pin plug, okay, there's the male end of it right there, and of course the keeper that latches it is broke, we'll have to, once we finish this up, we'll have to like wrap a zip tie through it or something to hold it together so it doesn't come unplugged on them. Oh, come on, man, where in the hell is it at? I'm just kind of curious to see if I have a ground back at that. You know, I probably don't even need to. Let's see what's going on here. I'm pretty confident to pull on it now with it being soldered. It's not going to come a ton on me. So this is the three wire. I had five volts and I had signal. Let's see. Let me hook my power probe. Back up. Uh, we need to put the ground back on. And I need to get a wrench to tighten that up. Ah, power probe. Just kind of wondering if I got the signal return on that pressure sensor to come back on it now that I've got a ground to the ECM we'll see here in just a second if not we'll have to be fixing that and seeing where seeing what happened there maybe we'll get lucky and have a ground there now See what we got here, huh? 
Eh, nothing there. I have a signal return now. Okay. All right. You can plug this back in. Everything else is plugged back in. I'm pretty confident it will start. We need to get insight and see what kind of codes we got and all that good shit. Let's just see what happens real fast. Why is it not starting? codes last night. I think I'll get Cummins Insight. Let me go get Insight hooked up to it. Okay, so let's connect to the ECM. Is it turn this over if I can make, see my orange light should come on? I what I don't understand is how with both of those power fuses to the ECM, it was still running. I don't understand how it was running. I really don't. Okay, I don't want your work order. I don't, we're not worried about this whole piece of shit having a work order. Okay. Finally. So, I got a 123 act. Let's just clear them real quick. Man, my key. has been sticking on my computer. I think I know what's wrong with why the 123 code on the manifold pressure sensor is on. I think the terminals are spread. I need to collapse them. We'll see what happens if it comes back active. I don't know why I'm getting that 342 code. Engine won't start, no power to fuel solenoid. I gotta see what's going on with that. All right, the only thing that's active is that 342 code, which doesn't make much sense because let's just see here what happens definitely something going on there huh where's the power probe at makes you wonder i don't need to hold on a second i got a real cluster going on here My laptop go ding. It's like, what the hell is that all about, huh? Well, there's power on the son of a bitch, so why is it saying there's no power on it? Why, what the hell is that all about? came back and the 342 went away. is active 
know guys it's uh, getting late i'm gonna go home so here's the deal um so i it, what it do it keeps shutting down on me and throwing this um throwing this 434 code which is that three uh three pin plug in there is you know one to ground and two are constant power supplies and so i went through uh the troubleshooting on it and you'll check power there's like you check power from like pin 21 to pin 9 and what you're doing is you're checking power supply to the the grounds and the positives well i've got power and ground on all the pins required to make this thing run and it keeps shutting down and then it throws that 342 code and if you go to that 342 i might actually still have that up on quick serve here which one was it 342 okay uh 342 electronic control module was not calibrated with esdn or there is an internal memory error the engine will not start no power to fuel solenoid and i was well i had my fuel shut off or my had my power probe right on the positive here the fuel shut off solenoid and in it it went dead and then it shut off so uh and then it throws that 434 code and i actually checked that too and i was checking to see if i lost power i had it I had it sitting there idling and I had my uh, power probe right on the blade of that fuse and it never lost any power to it and it's got power out here so uh, I'm gonna just come in tomorrow and just I'm gonna run a wire over there and tie into one of those just just straight from the battery you know just just for due diligence just you know they want you to check resistance on the three pin plug from there to the battery to see if you got high resistance in the wire so i you know so what i'm going to do is just run a wire over there and just tie into that and then start it and see if it ever dies again and if it doesn't die then i know i've got something going on in the harness going from there to the battery but if it does still die then the ecm's junk so which i got a feeling the ecm's junk in it because of all the all the shit these guys have been doing hot wire and stuff and which reminds me let's go take the battery cables off again because i don't trust this thing with all the jerry rigging that these guys have been doing this stuff i don't need this thing catching on fire and burning my place down i want to kind of get it done and get it out of here um i need to get to work on my road runner here and in case uh, stacy young's motor i've got that John Deere 210C that I've got to get done. I've got a Duramax out there that keeps dumping rail pressure. Nowadays, trucks dumping rail pressure. It's like, it's a good times, huh? So I need to go home tonight and dig around in my green toolbox and see if I can find my test fittings for uh, the return flow check on that. <laughs> 